In this video, guys, we're gonna look at the payoff diagram for put options. Hey traders, warm welcome to you. Okay, so put options, a reminder is the right, but not the obligation to sell a specific underlying asset, most of the time a stock, commodity, futures, contract, whatever it may be, at a specific strike price, at a specific point in time in the future. So let's look at these two different payoff diagrams to see what our options contract will be worth at expiry. And the other way of looking at it, which is what would our PL be at expiry is gonna depend on the price we paid for the option. So let's start with this one first. So we've got XYZ stock, it's trading at 50 bucks a share, okay? And we have purchased a put option at 50, for $50 strike price at $10. That's more, that's more useful for this now. But let's just see, we've purchased a $50 strike price put option at some point in the future. It doesn't matter now for it. It doesn't matter what the point in the future is for this example. We just want to see what the value of that option will be at expiry for different strike prices for different actual underlying prices at that expiry date. So let's have a look. We've got our Y axis here with the value of the option at expiry. And we've got our X axis here, which is giving us our stock price. So let's look at some examples. Let's say, for example, the company went bust and it's trading at zero dollars. That would, would that be good for us if we bought a put option? Yeah, it would, because we've bought the right, but not the obligation to sell 100 shares per contract with the options contract, one contract's worth 100 shares, to sell shares at $50 in something that's now trading at zero dollars. Would we take up that right? Of course we would, because we've now got $50 worth of premium and juice in that trade. We could sell it at zero in underlying, or we can exercise the contract and sell it at 50. We are gonna exercise that contract. What's the value of that option now? $50, because it's the price at the strike price minus the underlying $50 is the value of the option at expiry. Let's go down the scale, do one more in the middle here. Let's say now, the stock price is at $10. It's been hammered from 50 to 10. Pretty bearish for the stock, but good for us as buyers of put options which give us the right, but not the obligation to sell shares at 50 bucks. What's the value of that? Well, we can go the underlying and sell it for 10. We've got the, uh, the contract that says we can sell it at 50. The value of that is gonna be 50 minus the 10. The value at expiry of that contract is going to be $40 per contract. That's a pretty good result for us. Okay, and if we went further out the other way and we said, okay, the stock price is currently trading at $60, let's say we went up here and they're currently trading at $60 but we've got the right but not the obligation to sell stock at 50 is that any use to us no unfortunately now that's worthless because we could sell that in the underlying at 60 and all we've got is a bit of paper that says we can sell it at 50 which is less than the current price worthless so that's all very well but what about depending on the price we pay for the option that's what we care about as traders and dealers right so Y axis, I've got a profit and loss. X axis, I've got stock price. Let's look at an example here if the stock price went bankrupt again. So it went to zero, we're like, woohoo, we've bought a put option, we've got the right, but not the obligation to sell stock at $50. Are we gonna exercise that? Yeah, we are, because the current stock price is zero. But don't forget, we have paid $10 for the privilege of that option, for the privilege of doing that. We've bought that option for $10. So what's our PL? Our PL is gonna be, the value of the option is gonna be 50, but of course we paid 10 for it initially, so our P&L is gonna be $40 per option contract. Okay, now let's move down the scale a little bit, and let's look at what happens if, if the stock price was 10, 20, 30, $40. Right, all of a sudden we're like, yeah, $40. We've got the right, again, to sell stock at 50. Are we gonna take up that right? Yes, we are, because it's currently trading at $40. Great, the value of the uh, underlying value of that contract and contract is $10, but don't forget, we paid $10 for it, so that's our break-even point. So it's got no value to us because we paid uh, $10 for it. It's a valuable option, so we'll exercise it, we'll get $10 back, but we paid 10, so we don't make any money. Our p is zero. Uh, now let's look and see what happens if the stock price is trading at $50. And by the way, this 50 
uh, corresponds to this level here, so we can see what we're doing. Let's say it trades at fifty dollars, right? We've we've got a put option to to to, to uh, sell stock at fifty dollars. It's currently trading fifty dollars. Uh, has that got any value? No, unfortunately not. As we saw in this example, there's no value, right? We can sell it in the underlying of fifty, so that contract's not worth anything to us. Unfortunately, though, we paid ten dollars for that contract, so our profit and loss is going to be minus ten dollars here we go here so you can see that our break-even point is 40 and when we get to 50 we start to lose money now it's important to note guys that that break-even point is going to be the underlying price plus the price we paid for the option uh, because if or, or minus the price we paid for the option because we have to cover the price we paid for it before we make any money so there's two different ways of visualizing it we've got the value of the option at expiry and our PL is going to be very dependent on the price we paid for the option.